Another outbreak that has been caused by brutal body contact in sports is paralysis. Society loves to see the bone crushing hits in sports like hockey, football, and boxing. However, they do not understand the extreme cost that can come of these hits. One horrible injury that can happen because of these hits is paralysis of varying levels and severity. Paralysis is the inability, whether temporary or permanent, to move part of the body. The most common cause for paralysis in sport is damage of the spinal cord. All three of the previously mentioned sports have shown cases of paralysis in their respected sports due to brutal, brutal body contact that happens legally in the sport. Some of the most tragic stories are of Travis Roy, a hockey player, Eric J. Legrand, a football player, and Magomed Abu Salamov, a boxer. The first one, Travis Roy, was born and raised in Augusta, Maine. He grew up playing hockey at a young age and absolutely loved the sport. He had a bright future where he and many others thought he would have a shot to play in the college and at the pro level. Needless to say, he was on top of the world with such an exciting and bright future. Then, during a regular season game, 11 seconds into the game, Travis was permanently paralyzed from the neck down. As soon as the puck was dropped to start the game, Travis went to make a routine defensive shoulder check and after the blow, knocked both players back. Travis was driven headfirst into the boards where he made contact. The hit exploded his fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae. This hit was absolutely illegal and in the rules of the game, however, caused Travis Roy to be permanently paralyzed from the neck down. Another case of paralysis in sport was the football player Eric J. Legrand. Eric played football for Rutgers University as a defensive tackle. During a tackle at a game on October 2010, uh, he became paralyzed from the neck down and was having difficulty breathing. During the kickoff, Eric lowered his head too far to make a tackle. The impact caused Eric to sever his spinal cord and afterwards laid on the ground for several minutes until he was carted off the field and sent to the emergency room. He fractured his C3 and C4 vertebrae and was paralyzed from the shoulders down. Although later he recovered slightly and could feel tingling in the lower half of his body. These cases of paralysis were all completely legal and had no foul play involved. Brutal, bo brutal body contact in sport is legal but can cause serious injury to the body that can last a lifetime without ever being fixed. We, the future governing bodies of sport, need to find a way that can limit, if not completely erase, cases like this from ever happening again. Showing you another video, just of some of these massive hits that can cause these traumatic injuries. So, if cases of con concussion, CTE, and paralysis weren't reasons enough to cause change to brutal body contact in sports, then this final bodily harm will. Death. There are cases of death in all three of the previously stated sports of hockey, football, and boxing because of brutal body contact. These cases include Bill Masterson, a hockey player, Patrick Day, a boxer, and Dylan Thomas, a football player. The ultimate price to pay in sports is death, and all of these deaths were caused by brutal body contact. The first case of death that occurred because of brutal body contact was Bill Masterson. Bill, who had previously sustained several concussions in his career, lost his balance during a game on January 13, 1968. Bill tripped after an opposing player hit him with a clean check and struck his head against the boards. A witness said that it sounded like a baseball bat hitting a ball. After the impact, Bill didn't move and tragically died 30, 30 hours later in the hospital. This was a perfectly legal hit that caused the death of a human being in sports. Another tragic case of brutal body contact leading to death in sport is Patrick Day, the boxer. Patrick was a boxer who was a super welterweight fighter in the USBA. He was knocked out by Charles Conwell in the 10th round of the USBA Super Welterweight title fight. After the fight, Day was hospitalized and in extremely critical condition. After having a seizure on the way to the hospital, he fell into a coma and never regained consciousness again. He, went, he was announced dead by his promoter the, the next day. He received severe head trauma, which caused all of his symptoms and death. Another case of legal brutal body contact that led to death. In conclusion, all of these cases of concussions, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, that's a tough one, paralysis, and death were all caused by brutal body contact. Contact that is within the perimeters of the sport, but can have devastating effects on the players. Many of these cases can be prevented by better technology and safety equipment and medical advancements, as well as rule changes with harsh punishments if they are broken. 
For example, the crackback block in football is being heavily penalized if it happens on the field to prevent horrible injuries. This type of violence is terrifying because it is technically legal, even with all of the dangerous repercussions. We truly need to reevaluate the risk of particular sports violence and make changes to the rules and cultures if we want to prevent these cases from happening with greater frequency or at all in the future.